several screencasts, we're going to look at cost, volume, profit analysis. In particular, we're, we will review the basics of cost, volume, profit analysis, take a look at break-even and target profit calculations, look at how to extend CVP analysis to multiple products, and then we'll add some additional complications such as taxes. The basics of cost volume profit analysis can be reviewed by looking at the cost volume profit graph. We'll start off by setting the origin and then we'll have an axis that represents the volume or quantity of activity, another axis to represent the amount of profit, Next question then is how to draw the graph relating volume to profit. Well, we know a few things. We know that at the point where activity is zero, profit is equal to minus the fixed cost. That point has to lie on the graph. So given that we know one point on the graph, we can ask, do we know the slope of the graph? And, of course, we can calculate that by the contribution margin per unit. Well, the contribution margin is defined as sales price minus variable cost. If we use that, we've now accounted for both fixed costs and variable costs. And we're able to draw a graph relating volume and profit, and that also incorporates cost information. So the cost volume profit graph starts at the point where profit is equal to minus fixed costs. Then another interesting point is where profits are equal to zero and the equations suggest then that this occurs when the total contribution margin is equal to fixed costs. And then of course for any volume greater than break even we can calculate the profits by following the point from quantity up to the cost volume profit line to test our understanding of basic cost volume profit analysis let's see if we can do a couple of relatively simple problems in the first problem I'd like you to determine the operating income and the break-even in revenues so give that a try now Operating income is defined as contribution margin per unit times quantity minus fixed cost. Substituting in the values from the problem, first we see that contribution margin is sales price minus variable cost, $12 minus $8 or $4. Now multiply that by the number of units, 3 million, subtract off fixed cost, of six million and we're left with operating income of six million. Turning to break even then, once again we substitute in the values fixed cost of six million divided by the four dollar per unit contribution margin equals 1.5 million units for break even. To get to revenues we multiply the 1.5 million units times the sales price of twelve dollars and we end up with $18 million. We can see this on the graph as well. We start off at zero level of sales and at that point profit is minus the fixed cost or six million dollar loss. When we get to 1.5 million in sales we've reached the break-even point when sales of 3 million units are achieved, profits reach $6 million. Let's try another practice problem. Take a few minutes and see if you can work out the effects of changing some of the parameter values. When I try to solve a problem like this, I find it helpful to write down the base case and use that as a template. So in the first problem, we're asked to see what happens to operating income 
when variable costs increase by 10%. So using the base case as a template, we notice that a 10% increase in variable cost means that variable costs go from $8 to $8.80, which of course means contribution margin falls from $4 to $3.20. And then we can follow the rest of the template to see that operating income will fall from $6 million to $3.6 million. In the second case, fixed costs increase by 5% and units sold decrease by 8%. The increase in fixed costs of 5% means that they go from 6 million to 6.3 million and the decrease in units sold means that the units fall from 3 million to 2 million 760,000. Note that the contribution margin is back at the base case level and we can see that operating income has gone from 6 million in the base case to 4,740,000 in case.